So you probably feel the same, but every year I feel like kicks are getting harder and harder. And when you think you finally nailed it, there is a that releasing a track with a kick that hit like never before. So it's time for another kick tutorial. I mean, it's easy if you ask anyone, including myself, like how to make a good techno kick, people will tell you EQ, compression, distortion. Repeat and a lot and a lot. Now this is an annoying answer because you tried that, but it probably didn't work out. And no matter how many VST or device you put on that chain. Well, the reality is for how long did you try to make a kick? I have this kick here that we're gonna make today. <laughs> It took me a whole afternoon to make it and I've been making techno for more than 10 years. Now I understand not everyone can afford to spend the afternoon just for making a kick and that's why there is sample pack for that so you can kind of straight up go into the music production process but I guess if you click on that video it's that you're a bit curious about how to create techno kick from scratch. Now I'm not gonna lie to you experimenting is key and except if you got lucky or you're very talented if you want to create a kick from scratch it's gonna take some time. All right, so let's jump into Ableton and make this kick. Now you're gonna get a drum rock because we're gonna layer and you're gonna load a kick. So I took this kick is from the 10th power drum machine. Uh, I made a free pack and you can actually grab this kick for free. I'll put it in the description. And I load it into a simpler. Now the first things I like to do with kick is to apply a pitch envelope. So usually I will put 12 semitone, it can go up more. And I will play as well with the GK and the sustain until I find something I like add this extra sponge. Now I also like to use the filter section because you can choose a filter with some distortion and the idea is I use the filter is because I use the low pass filter that I will modulate with an envelope to open fastly. So if you go to control and you click on envelope I will always put the amount at the maximum and again I play with the GK and the sustain until I get something I like. Also I play with the frequency, the resonance and the drive. This makes a huge difference and there is a lot of room to explore here. Now once I have my raw kick, I usually like to start to layer percussion. It can be any type of percussion like clap, tom, explosion, slamming door. Anything really which got a, a nice transient, a nice impact can work. Now for our second layer, I'm gonna use a clap. The idea is to get a transient. Here what I've done is I pitch it down 24 semitone and I shorten it to have something very sharp. And I also change the starting point. Now I add a bit of reverb and finally drum bass. So this is really to make it stand up more in the front. I use the compressor, the crunch gonna add a bit of mid high and then especially here the transient is gonna accentuate the transient of the clap making it even more clicky. All right then just a slight low pass around 6 kilohertz to kind of tame the high high frequency. So with the kick. Now for the last one I'm gonna use this percussion. Now this one is the one who's gonna give really the character. Here I pitch it down 14 semitone. So it sounds like this. Now we're gonna need to process it a little bit more and I'm gonna use raw I love to use raw because you can really bring up the, the mid high to a percussion, uh, especially when you use the multiband. I usually don't change the band, and then I experiment with uh, the different distortion modes, the high angle and uh, the clickiness. But yeah, this is just trial and error. I try all the different one, and I choose the one I like the best. And finally, I'm gonna use drum bass, similar reason than to raw. It's really like to kind of bring stuff more in the front, make them louder, a little bit crunchier. One of the things I found hard is to really bring up that mid high, which really make the sound snap and really feel like a smashing sound. So drum bass is great for that. Again, the compressor to bring the sound more in the front, the heart's gonna add a bit of low, I bring a bit of drive, crunch gonna add some mid high. Again, transient, accentuate the transient. And I just bring down the out just to kind of level properly. But yeah, with the rest, Now we start to get something, now we're gonna need to process everything as a whole. I'm gonna add a bit of reverb first. Something very gentle, you see I bring the dry wet at 12%, the decay is at 800 milliseconds, so it's very short like amount of a room tile, and the diffuse is at the minimum. Now it seems slow, but we're gonna add some more processing and it's gonna obviously bring up the reverb. And we're gonna use raw again. Now again, just bring this mid high and the, always the difficulty is to bring the mid high but to don't lose too much the low end. And it's always about balance because usually you start to push the mid high but then you lose the low and then you push back the low but then you lose the mid high and the punch and the snappy kind of part of the kick. So it's always tricky. I found it with raw it's a bit easier because you can kind of control each bend. You can see in the mid I like to use the trifold. I like on the high to use usually the noise injection or the shard because they can add a bit of noise and it's not a problem. The polynomial and the fractal are usually very clean and then after you have your classic tripreant and soft sign like you had in saturator but yeah. <laughs> 
can see how it brought the mid high a little bit without compromising too much the low oh and now what i've done is i bring utility with a minute adb of gain it's just kind of gain staging before to enter into another raw All right, you can hear that with this one is another story. And we have the low with the soft clipping, the mid with the threefold as well, and the high with the fractal. Now, one tip here I use, I really like, is this all this tone parameter. It really makes a difference here. So I'm gonna put it as it was by default. So tone negatively or positively is gonna bring more low or high. And this is gonna kind of... I kind of avoid the load to be too distorted and it just worked perfectly. And you can see again the band that here I changed 305 kilo. Again, I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't put this parameter because I know this distortion works better with that. I'm just trying, when I'm using raw, I'm literally going every through all distortion and then changing the amount, changing the bias. Uh, it takes time, but to be honest, it's a very good, good device that I use a lot. So yeah. All right, and we have our kick now. We're gonna talk a little bit about the rumble or the offbeat. So usually I would use a reverb. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna create a new MIDI track and we're gonna kind of do a bass, but with an explosion sound. So I use this sample. I already talked about this library. It's called 99 Sound Cinematic Sound Effect. And you have all these kind of cinematic hits which are perfect for techno because you can uh, really process them they have a big impact they have they are very rich in sound very industrial so it's just like heaven for techno producer and this sample are free i put it in the description and i love to use that so sometimes i will use it as a layer on top of my kick drum today i decided to use it differently and to kind of make the rumble with so here what i've done is i changed the starting point because this part is kind of a reverse and me i just need like this part and in terms of midi pattern here i've kind of done this here you will have your kick and the other kick and i kind of done the double and i just shift them this is depend of your sample starting point as well but that's what was working well the best for me for the groove so now you have something like this pretty short the thing is we are 150 bpm so you don't really have time to have a long release first thing i'm gonna do is add the hybrid reverb just to make a bit of mess I like to use the convolution only mode and then after it's up to you different taste you can play with the size but yeah all soft hole and a bit of a Q 50% now the idea is to kind of imitate a rubber so we need to make a mess and for that we're gonna use our good old amp in bass mode and crank up the bass as well pretty massive we're gonna go even further and have some uh, distortion Like I said, I really want a big mess and we're gonna use sidechain. So usually you can use sidechain compression or I have a rack as well for that, to like to do some ducking effect. Today we're gonna use auto pan because we need something very sharp. So basically I'm on 100%, we don't want the phase. Uh, we want the rate at one four to have this kind of every bit. And we want a square waveform because we want something very sharp. So here the, the thing is the problem, we need to put our set at 90 degrees. So like this, it's uh, going well with the kick. We really have our offbeat stuff going on. Now we're gonna put back everything in mono. And finally, we're gonna low pass everything. So here again, you have to be very careful because depending on where you stop your low pass filter, it's kind of gonna give the tone of your rumble. You see some can be darker, can be a bit more up. So now we have this with the kick. Now you can add the extra reverb if you wanna make it a bit more stereo and a bit more cavernous as well. This is really depend what you want and you track. Maybe sometimes it's good to don't put it because if you have other stereo element or an ambience, maybe that's not something you wanna do. And yeah, we pretty much have our kick. Now you can even go even further and kind of process everything as a whole. So you can use some glue compression. Here actually I've kind of tried the weird setting where I bring down the range uh, and the threshold, but it's just kind of act as a limiter, I guess. And 
then I add this color limiter that I usually like to use with the saturation because it brings a bit more warmth. This is really to make things louder than they are. This might be a problem because then after at the mastering stage you might not have that much headroom to kind of improve your low end a little bit. But yeah, that's how it sounds overall. When I'm designing kick, I never do things chronologically like this it will always be you start to process something you tweak for example then you start to layer you modify your layer go back to the first layer tweak the overall processing then go back to the second layer add the third layer tweak the overall and it's constantly back and forward and unfortunately this is something very hard to transcribe into a tutorial because it will probably take one hour even edited now if you want to know a little bit more about like kind of the rumble the percussion loop on top i've made already plenty of video i even made the, this work we kind of sum up everything to kind of create all these kind of things yeah if you want to grab this kick i will put it in the description you can grab it for free and experiment with. I will also link other kind of tutorial I made about industrial techno where I'm talking about uh, industrial techno kick and where you can learn some few tips here and there from. And yeah, see you next time for the next video. Bye.